hair Lala, Lala was a feral dog. And when we say feral, we're referring to a species of animal that is um, domesticated and, if you like, gone back to the wild. So the canine has been domesticated, but now we have in America lots of packs of feral dogs running around. And actually, it is a problem that's pretty worldwide, which you probably are familiar with. Hence, all of the big push to get the animals spay and neutered because we have this huge overpopulation and not enough homes for everybody to go to. And so this, this dog here, when she was found, Lala, she uh, was already an adult dog and it took the rescue group a week to catch her because she was terrified. And she was living under a trailer. This is up in Mexico where I used to live. And uh, she had with her a whole bunch of pups. And then finally the rescue group caught her and they managed to find homes for the pups. But her particular future would have been somewhat bleak because to take a, a dog that is basically wild and to get them to want to be with you close to humans that have before shot at them, uh, shouted at them, chased them off, tried to kill them, in other words, so humans are the threat. The last thing that, uh, a feral dog wants to do is go, hey, you're my friend, <laughs> let me hang out with you. <laughs> so with Lalo, they called her Brownie back then when they first called her. It was a little bit touch and go. So the very first thing that I taught her was to the SIT, which is what she's doing very nicely now. And because she's a very sensitive dog, the approach to training dogs like this actually has to be hands off. And that's what we're gonna do with the little pup who's over there. She's actually now on top of that cardboard box. She's behind the igloo. I don't know if you can see her. It's very cute. So she came in yesterday. She was caught yesterday. She comes from up at the Tennessee-Alabama border, and what they said was that the mother is Great Pyrenees German Shepherd mix, and she's had quite a few litters of pups. But they found one pup dead on the side of the road, and they don't know what happened to the other one, and they were able to catch that one. And uh, she's maybe nine weeks old. So we're lucky because she still is young enough, so we'll be able to do something with her. Now, the worst thing that I could do is force myself upon her, thinking that she's a domestic dog and knows all about humans and knows all about cars and trucks and doors and other dogs and radios and TVs and uh, the human voice. She knows none of that stuff and so since yesterday she's been hiding in the corner. I mean it's very poignant to say the least. So all I'm doing is I'm going in there quietly and just throwing pieces of turkey at her and then I'm leaving her go back out again. As long as I make sure she has enough room to feel that she can escape somewhere, that I'm not flooding her with me. If I put too much pressure on her, as anyone would, um, normally without realizing, and that's when um, she could turn around and bite. And I think that that's what happened at the clinic yesterday, at the veterinary clinic yesterday. But they didn't, I don't think they understood, perhaps, and so uh, she did bite one of the vet techs. So when you have the feral dogs, you, you've got to understand, or any dog actually, quite frankly, if they don't understand what's happening and you push yourself too much on them, they'll turn around and bite you. And that goes for training too. So you've got to be quite careful how you handle it. So with this little girl, what I'm doing is I'm giving her lots and lots of time to find her own adjustment here at my place. She's getting enough stimulation from the environment already. So my dogs are coming and going, people are coming and going, um, the phone rings, I have training lessons, so she's already being exposed to that without me even having to do anything directly with her. If I let her get used to that here, it'll serve uh, her in terms of being able to very slowly make tiny little baby steps and understanding uh, humans and how we work. I mean, if you... Think of it in terms of the flying saucer came down and picked you up and took you to their planet and expected you to understand them. That would be pretty much how a dog or any animal that's captured from the wild feels when you take them into captivity. Just because they're a dog doesn't mean that, that this is not captivity. Domestication is a nice term for captivity. <laughs> it's the same thing. So if I approach this as I as I would when I work with wild animals, it's the same thing for me. So we are very much looking at letting her feel that the environment around her, which is our domestic environment, is reinforcing all the good stuff. 
by reinforcing all of the good stuff, then she wants to be here. It will build up her confidence. She won't feel overwhelmed and flooded. And then eventually we'll be able to get her a good home with, uh, uh, with a person that really loves her. So that, that's, that's a feral doll. Tiny little baby steps, reinforcing each little step as we go along. There's one other thing that uh, I will work with her, not yet, but the next stage, and that will be what's called target training. And when people go up to a dog, a dog they don't know, what's the very first thing that everybody always does? They stick out their hand, don't they? And they say, smell my hand. So when you have a dog that doesn't know anything about humans and someone does that, they're like, whoa, here's this. You know, it's like a hand coming in over on top of their head. So I train a dog to touch my hand. So I have my open palm down and I initially have food there. So they come and they target it on the food and they take the food from my palm. And I reinforce that particular behavior. So then I uh, open up the palm, the dog goes towards it and I use my clicker to mark that. And they touch the palm of my hand and then I feed with the other hand. Then I start to insert the command word touch. And they come to the hand, they touch my hand, I click and reinforce it. So there we see the breathing is getting a little bit uh, quicker. She's trying to, she's not looking at me at all, but rather now turning her head into the corner. So these are all physical signs of her trying to uh, hide from me. I am the thing that she is scared of. Because her history of humans is that we are something to be scared of. There, you see that? So her face is completely jammed in the corner like that. So if I were to go and grab her now, for example, um, I would completely overwhelm her and she would turn around and try and bite me. So what we're looking for, the next step that we are looking for, is for her to turn and watch me come in here and actually put the food on the ground and for her not to be scared of that. And the day that I see her turn around and actually watch me do this, then I know I've made a breakthrough. And then after that, it'll be easy. Right now, we're still very much in the critical part, which is to be expected because, you know, she's 12 hours in with me and that's it. So.